Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I posted the things from Time Magazine, as you can see here, where it says same fear, different year. It shows all the different things that have happened and how Time has put them on the cover, and they're a big uh, nothing burgers, you know. So that, that's uh, I've been through that before. In 2006, I was in Guangzhou, China. And it was when SARS broke out. I happened to be in the hotel getting ready to fly uh, over to Japan to uh, give a class. And uh, I was delayed by one day. I didn't know why. But then the next day I flew out. And then when I got to Japan, there was no quarantine or anything like that. And then I found out after I got back to the United States that SARS had broken out there in Guangzhou. And that's where there was people that died. And, of course, I don't know how many died worldwide, but... That was all that was going on. I had no idea, and I was right in the midst of it, and I had no idea what was going on. So the thing here, it says the media is the is the virus because, you know, they put so much stuff out there that tries to scare you. And some of it is scary, of course, but others, you know, not so much. So, you know, most of your worries that you have never come true, so try not to think about that. My father used to say, uh, if worrying did any good, he said, I would go into the cor into the corner and sweat blood. And that's probably a pretty good analogy uh, to look at anyway. So that's the main thing that uh, trying to tell you folks, just because it's in the news doesn't mean that it's so. And especially nowadays with uh, social media, the way that it is, it, it's really quite, uh, quite disturbing. Our guest at the break will be Stan Harley. But before uh, we get to some of the technical stuff, I have to share something here that one of our friends uh, from Florida sent us uh, today that is just absolutely, uh, it really struck a chord with me. And it's it's about uh, basically pretty much about life. And basically what it's saying is it says, life is like a camera. Focus on what's important. Capture the good times. Develop from the negatives. And if things don't work out, take another shot. Boy, if that's not a true statement, I've never heard one. So it reminds me of what the great Gretzky said, Warren, Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And that's really, really important. All right. We have a question here today about the price of copper. We posted this when it broke out here on Monday. I want to get this up here so we'll be able to see it again. We're getting very close. I mean, it's going, doesn't make any difference whether the market goes up or down. This little puppy is getting ready to move. You can see we're almost up here to this 411, 416 level, and that's getting very, very close. Now, you've got a multiple ABCD patterns up in here, so it's important to watch that. Okay, on an educational note, today is the first day of the foundation for the study of cycles. They're having six hours of live tra training for cycles. It, uh, it's from 2 to 4 uh, Eastern time uh, each day for 10th, 11th, and 12th. I, I'm, not, I'm not into that program. What I do is just too simple, and they need things that are more um, mathematically oriented, I guess. So not a problem with that. I still watch, the, still watch the cycles. I've always been interested in it. This is basically what we're watching here is a 135 pattern completing up here around this level, around 414 uh, in the copper. And remember, most of the metals have been going up, but silver has topped and has dropped a dollar an ounce here in the last few days. So there's been some type of a topping formation here in that market, but it's still, you know, relatively quiet. So that's it. What I'm planning on doing, and this is a paid uh, thing, folks. It's 95 bucks, and I'm going to go through and listen to what the people are saying, and I'm going to record it, 
and the things that I think I, I'm going to sn- take snapshots of the things that I think are important so I can share them on the show. But Bill Meridian's going to be on on Thursday, and he's one of the main speakers there. So he'll be able to tell us some of the stuff that is going on for cycle theory and stuff. So we'll let uh, Bill help us with that uh, on Thursday. Friday, we'll have Peter Elides. Uh, next Tuesday, we'll have Jim Bartoleone. And, of course, Monday is a holiday. Okay, now let's move on to another chart that we need to be talking about a little bit here today, and that is this natural gas. I'm going to try to give you a a little uh, heads up on the natural gas. You remember yesterday I posted this natural gas contract, and and several people asked me about it because uh, it had some things in it that I don't mention very often, and part of it are the harmonic numbers. You'll see these little blue lines that are here. Those are just swings. Okay, and those swings repeat. It repeats once, twice, three, four, five, six times. Okay, and and that that's what those that's what those do. Now we found those by using the MIPS computer. A MIPS means multiple millions of integers per second. MIPS, M-I-P-S, mil, millions of integers per second. And uh, it would print out that these you'd see these things line up. That you know, they'd ask you what's the average swing over a 30-day period, 90-day period, 100-day period, or find that swing. And those how we that's how we found out what those harmonic numbers were. Basically, folks, it's real simple. It's just the market repeating over and over again. Now the $64,000 question that someone asked me, actually two people did. How do I know whether a market has changed or not? Look it up here. You see, this market still looks bullish, doesn't it? But you see here, this is the first time that you see the A, B, C, D pattern forming right there on the upper left-hand corner. You see that beautiful A, B, C, D right there. Okay, that's right out of Gartley's book. He said, you don't have to try to pick a top. He said, just go and find the first A, B, C, D correction after a top or a bottom has been made and sell that one. He said, and then put your stop right above the high. And that's been a pretty good thing to do over the years because Gartley's become a very popular pattern on a lot of different uh, you know programs and stuff so platforms so anyway that's what we're looking at right here now the second question someone asked is how do you how do you determine what the trend is well folks <laughs> the trend is directly related to the question that you ask what time frame are you in you see if you if you look at it look at this you a, a child could tell you that this thing is in a downtrend right why? Look, you have lower tops and lower bottoms. You got A, B, C, D patterns all the way through here, all the way down. That's all it's doing. Okay? So that's what you're watching. Now, one of the things that they'll be talking about on this cycles program tomorrow will be the valid trend line concept that uh, Jim Hurst d- dealt with. And I want to bring that up to show you what that looks like. Hold on one second. I want to update the, the, the uh, chart here. On the crude oil first because it did have a nice rally breaking above that trend line and I wanted to spend just a tiny bit of time at that you'll be able to see it this way and then all I'm going to do now is draw in the uh, the uh, hold on there it is right here I want to draw in the trend line what they call the valid trend line and why it's valid is it's picking the previous highs okay as the point where the market goes to it's following these little hot, the, hitting those harmonic numbers, and that's why it's a, a, a valid trend line. And now you can see it's broke it. Now it's backing off a little bit. Anyway, that's what we're paying attention to right now. Stay tuned. 877-927-6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I want to review a couple of stocks that are in the news all the time that we've been following. Uh, the first one is uh, Tesla. If you remember, we were looking for a buy in Tesla around the 109 level. Uh, it got as low as 106. It's now trading at 116. Uh, you'll notice it still held that bottom. It's, it, that's a good part, but the bad part is it's not running away to the upside. So that's something to have to pay close attention to. Uh, there's a lot of news coming out that's saying that these electric cars are bogus because you just can't uh, fill them up with electricity fast enough. And uh, they have a lot of problems with battery length and all that stuff. All that stuff will be corrected out into the future. So that's not going to be a problem, I don't believe. Remember, folks, in the year of 1929, there were 2,000 automobile companies in the United States that eventually in 1980 uh, it was down to three Ford Chrysler and General Motors that's that's all we really had in the United States so it was very very important to remember that and then you know during that time of the 70s that's when the you know Honda and Toyota came out with their cars and took over the market especially in California when I was living there my gosh they were everywhere so anyway that's what we're watching here uh, with Tesla it's holding up there but anything below 106 would be uh, quite bad. I wouldn't worry too much about Mr. Uh, Mr. Musk. Anybody that fades him is you better pay attention to that because he's a pretty smart boy, and I think he's going to survive, you know, no matter what happens. Okay, the next one that I wanted to uh, bring to your attention here is uh, I believe it is App Amazon. That's the one. This is the one that's acting the best, folks. Let's get this up here. It's got so many things going for it. That it uh, for that level down there at that 81 level it hit the exact number. I mean, within 30 cents of the exact low, right down here where that butterfly pattern was forming, right in here. And you can see we've rallied up about almost 10 percent now. It just yeah, 10 percent. And so we've had a pretty good rally. Now, as as long as we don't go below this level right here, 
then that's uh, that's something to pay attention to. But right now what we're doing is we're just setting right at a retracement of that previous high. Here again, you can see the downtrend. You see how you determine the downtrend? You see the lower tops? See the lower bottoms in there? That's a downtrend. You know, so you have to ask, what is the time frame? Well, you look at a daily. Yeah, that looks good. You look at a monthly. The the This is still going to be an uptrend on a monthly because, you know, the darn thing traded at 64 at one time, for heaven's sakes. You know, and here it is, uh, you know, <laughs> trading quite higher, quite a bit higher. Anyway, that's what you're watching here as you're seeing this unfold. So you've got to remember when you're asking the person what the trend is, the first thing you say, what is the what is the time frame that you're looking at? Because a 15 minute time frame is different than an hourly and four hour and daily and weekly, monthly. They're all different. That's why you have to do that. That is not my, my definition. That's the definition of John Murphy in his technical analysis book, Technical Analysis of the Futures Markets. It sits right here on my desk. And I remember him in uh, Texas once. We were down in Dallas and some guy was heckling him about trend. And John gave him a nice 15-minute lecture on uh, what was going on. And the guy says, well, you don't even trade. And, of course, John immediately pulled up his hedge fund that he uh, was running, and he showed him his, his uh, results, and he, he did quite well. So anyway, that's, that's what you want to remember. Now, the next one we're going to take a look at uh, is the one that is – I get more information on this than any other, and that was the one that we had that we were going to call it the trade of the year. And let's get this up here to take a look at it because here again, we've been telling you that this thing is not acting right. And as you can see now by looking at the weekly chart here on coffee, this thing has broken badly. We're going to look at this uh, right after this chart. But you can see here we hit the level. We made an ABCD. And now we've broken down. We're below 150 a pound now, folks. So you can expect big decreases in your coffee price at Starbucks. And if you believe that, I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge that are available on immediate purchase with credit, if you prefer. Okay, now let's take a look at coffee on the daily chart. Here again, you're going to be seeing it. You see the on the weekly chart, it's still in an uptrend. But on the daily chart, it's been in a substantial downtrend. So you get this up here and take a look at it. Boom, that's it. See, when, when I'm trading, folks, I'm concerned with this right here. That's an ABCD pattern. I know that those work. Look at the ABCD pattern right here. Look at the ABCD at the top, A, B, C, D, right at the top of the market up there at uh, much, much higher prices, three-something. Three Look at straight down. Here's There's nothing on the way down here. This is what we call a major, major bear market. There's not even a 382 in here. And that's what I'm afraid is going to be happening in stocks one of these days, especially in some of these tech stocks. I don't know what's going on. But look what we've done now. We've made a perfect ABCD here, and now we've broken down into new low ground. This is not a very bullish picture, folks. So remember – this was this when you did the the buy was right here at 155. We doubled bottomed here at 155. We went up to 174. That was a big money. That's five thousand dollar move in coffee. But you know when you're making a trade a year, you want to be looking at something up in here. So that would have been your first say. Well, at least you got to protect yourself some profit right there. And then now it's gone into new low ground. If I'd have done this as a trade of the year, and this is why I don't do it because I have to keep explaining why I didn't do it is I would get to break even just as soon as I could. All of those trades that I did and all those years that I did trade of the year, I had no losses. I had some that were breaking even, but I didn't have any losses. I think out of the 14 years, we had 11 out of uh, 14 were profitable. Some of them were really big, and others were, you know, the other three that we uh, had were break even. So and that's just using simple, you know, back-in-the-envelope math, uh, you know, basically saying, yep, that's what we're looking at, and that's what we're trying to find whether it's going to uh, happen or not. Now, the several questions that I had uh, that were regarding the uh, pattern that we were looking at in the stock market, if you remember with the E-mini S&P, and I wanted to bring that up to you. Because <clears throat> Hold on one second here, because I had uh, assumed, because of the action in the market on Friday, that this was a top and it wasn't a top. What happened was the market blew through this and went right up here, folks, to the 50% level at 4070. Okay? 
4073 was the high. So it went to 4073, dropped 80 handles so far. Now we're just hanging in this area right here. Once we take out this to the downside, if we do, then it's going to be really, really nasty. But remember, we're in the January effect, so the odds favor the market going higher. If we can get above the 47 level, 4070 level, that's going to be green lights everywhere, and the market will go substantially higher. So that's why we're watching these numbers so very, very closely. When patterns fail, they're telling you that, uh-oh, something's not right in Camelot. Let's take a break here. When we come back, we're going to be chatting with none other than Mr. Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. And believe me, always has some good things for the people to uh, go with. And then, of course, on tomorrow will be a, a day where I'm going to do a couple of things with teaching here uh, regarding the cycle program that I'll be taking today for the foundation from the study of cycles. And we'll be right back with Stan Harley. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter, on the line today. Stan, how are you doing? I'm doing just awesome, Larry. Just awesome. That's what I like to hear. Listen, two questions. One is um, someone's asked a question of why does the Dow Jones look so much different than the S&P 500? And the second question is, are you going to be taking the uh, foundation for the study of cycles three-day event here this week? Because I am. I'd just like to know what's going on. I 
don't do as much cycle work as anybody else, but I'd like to see what's happening. Are you, are you going to be taking that class? Uh, yes, to, to both questions. Uh, why does the Dow look different than the S&P? Uh, well, they tend to make their cycle highs and lows on the same day. Uh, now, the amplitudes might vary. Um, but right now, we have a uh, kind of a bifurcated market. I, I, I track the big five, the Dow Jones Industrials, the Dow Transports, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ Composite, and the New York Composite. And I, and I look at the interplay among those five. The Dow is the strongest among the big five. It's maybe 9% from an all-time high. The, uh, yeah. the NASDAQ, uh, much lower, not far from 30% from an all-time high. Yeah. So you have a, and the S&P is kind of stuck in the middle. Why is that? Well, because different stocks make up the indice, different indices. That's why. Mm -hmm. You only uh, have 30 question. stocks in the Dow Jones. Well, yes, but, but, but different ones. It's not the number. It's the, the, the difference. Yeah. And okay. uh, investors' willingness to bid up the P.E. ratios uh, and the earnings and all of that all come into play. Okay. Uh, now, with respect to the next question, the foundation for the state of cycles, I'm a member. You're a member. I've been a member for, gosh, almost 40 years. Um, yep. And, uh, yes, I'll be watching that this afternoon. Absolutely. Good. Okay. Tell us what you're looking at, Sam. Well, I've got uh, – a few charts I brought today. Um, let's see. I'm having a little the challenge. First one, the, first one is, uh, the first one I have up is the INDU. Okay. Why don't we Dow use Jones. your screen because I'm having some challenges here I'll on take, my I'll end. take care of it. You just tell me when okay. to switch and I'll switch for you. Awesome. Uh, the first one is the Dow Industrials. And uh, the Dow, as you can see, is reasonably robust. Like I said, it's barely 9% from an all-time high. And... Uh, I think uh, we could be looking at what I'm calling some modest buoyancy in the popular averages. Oh, be between now and maybe two over the next couple of months. And uh, I think probably most stocks have peaked for the second or bull market cycle. I don't think all stocks have. I think there's a little bit more to go. And I think we could see that over the next couple of months. The S&P probably has peaked for the, uh, the current cycle. Certainly the NASDAQ has. The transports probably have. New York Composite probably has. Not so sure about the Dow Industrials, Larry. I think there is a reasonable chance the Dow could eke out a modest new high. That's not a forecast. That's not a prediction. But it's a, certainly a possibility over yeah. the next couple of months. I just don't think this market is ready to go down just yet. But... Uh, whether it turns into just a, a retest of the January highs or we get a token new high in the Dow remains to be seen. But I'm saying that's a possibility. Um, uh, Mr. Armstrong, Martin Armstrong, thinks it's going to go to 65,000 in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, no disrespect to Mr. Armstrong. I don't see that. <laughs> I, I just I don't see that. Um, I don't either. <laughs> in, the, in the cycles that I track, you and I on the air in the past have looked at some long-term charts. Uh, from my perspective, uh, there's very clear evidence of a 94-year cycle in the data series. 94 years ago was 1929. Back it up another 94 to 1835 and so on. The major yeah. peaks in the American, British, and Dutch markets that have, have occurred at 94-year at intervals and multiples thereof. Uh, and I think we're right in the zone. Now, of course, with the stock market, uh, tops the mark the stock market doesn't top on a dime unlike uh, say bitcoin or precious metals stock markets tend to be protracted evolution spanning many months and so as the topping evolution unfolds you get we tend to get fewer and fewer stocks and fewer and fewer indices peaking out so back in 2021 we saw the nas peak 2022 we saw the uh, the s&p and probably the new york composite peak um it's conceivable. First quarter of this year, we might see the Dow Industrials peak out. Just have to kind of wait and see. Uh, that's that's something I'm watching. Okay, next chart, please. Okay, this is your composite chart. Yeah, this is the uh, the Nasdaq, and uh, it uh, just does not look very strong at all, uh, as you can see. Uh, much much weaker than the Dow Industrials. 
And uh, I just don't see this this index going to a new high. Just just don't see it. Is the um, red line the 200-day moving average, Dan? Yeah. We got, we got okay. three moving averages on here, Larry. Um, we've got the 15-day in green, the 50-day in blue, and the red is the 200-day. And you see okay. the NASDAQ is, uh, is very weak. Yep. Okay. Now, do you, have, do you keep that on there because everybody is using it, or do you find it useful? I, no, I don't use it because everybody else uses it. I, I use it because I do, in fact, find it useful. Okay. Um, the 200-day is a very good measure of long term. The 50 is kind of a good measure of the intermediate trend. And the 15-day uh, does a dandy job defining what I call the trading cycles. And I'm going to get into the discussion of that here in a couple of slides. Okay. All right. You want to go to the next one? Let's, let's go to the next one, please. Okay, just give me one second here, and I'll get it up here. It only takes me, uh, well, more than one second. Oh, this is stuff I like. This is your 79-day trading cycle that you always talk to us about. Yes, this is, the, here. I want to get this, this. this is a daily chart of the okay. S&P 500 cash index. Okay. And uh, as you can see, a couple of things here. The highs have been coming in at approximately 40 trading day, not 40, 80. 80 trading days. It's exactly 79.6. And there's some Fibonacci math and some regression analysis that that validates that. But it's basically, it's two 40-day cycles uh, strung together. Um, and I denoted the highs. The last one occurred in mid-December. The next one is due at the end of March. And then a uh, horizontal line across the bottom. What we have here is for my eyes, is kind of a classic Edwards and McGee descending triangle, which have okay. bullish implications. Wow, that's really cool. Are you um, uh, when you when you look at these, Stan? Is there is there a point on there where you say this is not working anymore? That's one of the questions that uh, that someone uh, has just asked, and I maybe you can answer that. To me, uh, go ahead. Always, I mean, I I come up with theories. I talk about them with you on the air. I publish them in the reports I send out. But never, never should one be married to yesterday's decision. Um, by golly, if new data comes in that suggests uh, yesterday's theory needs to be uh, revised, or maybe I look at yesterday's data with a fresh set of eyes and I see something I didn't see before. By golly, oh, okay. uh, one better change one's mind in a heartbeat or you'll get steamrolled. Um, well, that steamrolling so, I yes. don't like. I've been there, done that. That's not no, any we've, fun. <laughs> we've all been there, done that, Larry. <laughs> hey, listen, we got to pay a few bills. Can you stay Understood. with us for another segment? Absolutely. We'll be right back with Dan Harley, folks. The Harley Stock Market Better. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Data White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter, and I believe we have your 79-day cycle up to date. Do uh, you want to take a gander at what we're looking at here, Stan? A absolutely. This this is uh, we're going to delve a little bit into technical analysis here. Um, in order to track market cycles, one needs some type of mathematical tool that can track rate of change. Um, since I'm an engineer by training, I, I call it price velocity. Basically, it's a speedometer. Some people call it momentum. I, I never like that term. Um, I like price velocity. Uh, but for any indicator to be valid, it has to be based on the cycle length. Well, it's kind of a chicken and egg thing. Well, how, how do you know what the cycle is? It, you, you have to, the indicator is tied to the cycle, but the cycle is always, cycles are always changing. So the way around that, because that's unknowable with certainty all the time, one needs to track indicators with multiple timeframes. And okay. that's the only way one can solve that problem. So what I've done here is I track price velocity or rates of change with a seven day look back, a 14 day look back and a 20 day look back. And I plot them on the same graph. And when all three components are heading up, and the market's going up when all three components are going down the market is trending down and right now coming off the low here of a few days ago you can see the seven day the 14 and the 20 day components are all heading higher so that means the market is not going down it's it's going up or at best it has stopped going down um, okay. and that's what it tells us it is the the trend now is to the positive it doesn't tell us how much or how far but it just tells us the market is, has stopped going down. Essentially, we've hit a cycle bottom, and now we're going up for some period of time. Um, the next chart. Uh, okay, this is the S and P cash. As I, yeah, uh, this one is a this one is a busy chart, but there's a lot of good information on here. I thought I'd I'd share with with the viewers. Um, what I found is, of course, the the dominant cycles across the crest, the tops, been coming in at about 80 trading days. Um, the bottoms have been moving around a little bit more. And the trading cycle is well defined by that 15 day moving average. Notice that moving average in green. When that green is going up, the market's going up. When it's going down, the market's going down. It picks out the trading cycles very, very well. Each trading cycle typically has what I call two sub cycles, alpha and bravo embedded within it. Sometimes at the tail end of a move, the trading cycle expands. That's very normal. You get some degree of distortion, um, something that Ray Merriman, of course, has written about in his work. I've noticed the same thing. 
And we tend to get a Charlie, sometimes a Delta component in, in the trading cycle. And that's exactly what we had at the October 13 lows. We had three sub cycles, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, embedded within the, uh, the trading cycle. Uh, now, here's something that is also very interesting, something that I glommed onto many years ago. When a market is heading down, we tend to get left translation. When a market is heading up, we tend to get right translation, something I learned from Walter Brezert many, many years ago, close oh, to yeah. 40 years ago. Um, this is indeed is very valid. If you look at this chart, look at the, the crests of each trading cycle, which I've marked in blue, where that is relative to the midpoint of the troughs in the cycle. And the troughs in the cycle are where the B, the red lines are, as you can okay. see. If the blue line is to the left of the midpoint of that trough to trough sequence, you've got left translation. Left translation is characteristic of bear market structure. And indeed we had that from the January highs all the way down into the October lows. Ah, yep. but take note, the most re recent cycle low that occurred here just a few days ago, note where the crest of the trading cycle occurred. It occurred to the right of the midpoint. First time that's happened in a year. That's called right translation, and that's indicative of a rising market environment. Okay. So, so you, th you think that we had a pretty good bottom form here on uh, Monday? I think we had a trading cycle low. It doesn't tell me how high okay. we're going. It just tells me okay. for the time period we're heading up. Um, and indeed, as you and I speak, the Dow's up about 90 some odd points, um, 85 points as I'm looking at the screen. Um, but right now, the trend appears to be higher based on the right translation and the measures of price velocity and the things that I'm tracking. Okay. It doesn't tell me for how far in magnitude. It doesn't tell me how long in time. It just tells me for the moment the market's heading higher. Oh, that's I really have to good. use exit rules to determine either how high or for how long. Yeah. Do you still share your information from your crystal ball, Stan? Absolutely. Attaboy. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, listen, and, it was and, a real pleasure and a, and seeing a nice you lunch with in a, in a nice yeah. lunch with Larry Pesavento and his wife could go a long way. Well, it was really great seeing you again. I hadn't realized it had been 20 years since we've seen each other. Oh, my God. But uh, we so had a lot of fun. No, Larry, I was in Phoenix a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Larry and I met right between Phoenix and Tucson, Casa Grande, had a real yeah. nice lunch. Uh, it was just just a delight seeing you again. Yeah, it was fun. Fun two hours for sure. Listen, we're going to have you on again soon, so please stay safe back there and enjoy the winter because spring is coming. Another two months and you'll be there. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stan, thank you for uh, thank you for. And if you see anything really interesting on the cycle, please share it with me, okay? And I'll share it with the folks because I know there's going to be some new stuff with uh, the speakers that they have, and so I think it'll be really interesting today, tomorrow. Uh, and uh, Thursday, so it'll be it'll be great looking at that. So, anyway, thank you again for being on the show, and we'll see you again. Tell the folks how they can reach you, Stan. Let's uh, get a little commercial in here for you. Oh, um, I have a website, HarleyMarketLetter.com, uh, that one can go to, and there's contact info. Uh, one can reach me from that. Okay, thank you so much for being on the show, my friend, and may God my bless. My pleasure. My pleasure. Okay, folks, Stan Harley, folks, the Harley Stock Market Letter, always uh, fun to have him on the air. And as he was saying, we have just made uh, intraday highs, I believe, on the uh, on the stock market here. Uh, we're trading, uh, not quite, we didn't quite do that. We got as high as 33,800 in the S&P, in the Dow Jones, and we got as high as 35 and change, I believe. Yeah, 36 and change. On the S&P, but they're not very far away, and the bias certainly appears uh, to be to the upside. The market that I'm really paying attention to here is this natural gas, folks, because that long-term pattern that we have in the natural gas, from my perspective, might have one of be one of the very best patterns that we're going to see here. Uh, we're not very far away. We're now I think we're only 50 handles or so away from uh, that bottom. Remember, we were looking at this. Uh, up here at 4050 just a little while ago and now we're down here 
at this level right here, heading towards $3 is what it looks like. It doesn't make any difference about what the news is or what's going on with the seasonality. This market is being pulled down by something, and so you want to wait until you have a really low risk entry point. And that point to us would be this larger A, B, C, D pattern that's out here that could give you one really good buying opportunity. So let's take a break here. 877-927-6648, and we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we were chatting about natural gas here before the break, and uh, we should mention that the administration in Washington as uh, they're thinking about uh, outlawing uh, natural gas and also gas fireplaces. Uh, that's something to look forward to. I posted a chart here of the crude oil. Uh, you'll notice here that this is a uh, four hour, uh, excuse, <coughs> excuse me, it's a four hour chart. And we made a bottom here, folks, with that 78% level. And now what we're in the process of doing is making an ABCD Gardley pattern up here at about $2 a barrel higher up there at around that 77 level. So keep a close eye on that one. That's a perfect Gartley. It's got everything that you could possibly ask. You've got a lower highs, 
but you do have higher bottoms. That's a possible negative. But if you make it up there, you have a beautiful ABCD setting right at the 61% retracement. Your risk there would be roughly about a dollar a barrel. And on the upside part of it for profit potential, it could go down and drop as much as 8 or $9 a barrel. You don't know where it's going to do that, but you want to see what your risk is when you put the trade on. Your profit objective is unknown, always. You never know when that's going to be, but at least that's something to look forward to because if the pattern is a complete ABCD, it could easily make that because of the lower tops that you're looking at. So that's one that's on the watch list. It probably won't happen today, but it's only a couple barrels away. It might make it today. If it makes it today, wouldn't be quite as happy. I'd like to see it take two or three days you know, to make it to that level. That's the thing that would be really, uh, really interesting to see uh, what we have going on here. So listen, live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. And remember, uh, to, if you go, want to go to see the Cycles program, go to the Foundation of Study of Cycles. You'll still be able to get in. I'm sure it's going to be three days of some really good information. I'll try to share the best of what I see. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Building wealth 